Is it true that you're potentially thinking of applying to Oxford to study history and English? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very much um, for joining us today. It's, it's really a pleasure to have you here. Um, so firstly, let's talk about the new book. You've already given us a bit of a summary. Um, and it's, no, it's by no means your first bit of fiction. You've already done an entire series of six books. And you spoke a bit about how you loved English at school. You did it at A-level. Did you ever see yourself um, going into writing and writing fiction, and especially children's books? Or was that something that came later during your career? Um, I think, you know, a good book, it doesn't matter what the age is, you know, you, you can love it no matter what. That's, that's one thing. I've always loved reading, um, whether it was, I don't know if you've read, you know, I can, I've just recently read Tomorrow, 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 I don't know if any of you have read that, it's really good, and I, th I didn't think I'd like it, or, but then I can read, um, you know, I can read a really good children's book. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's sort of honest and touches you or informative, I'll read anything. Um, I've always loved the power of word because of writing, because in a world that I'm sure you're feeling this already, you know, we're powerless over most things. We cannot control what anyone thinks of you or me. We can't control what grade you're going to get. You're going to have to show up. That's it. Do it. Do that. And that's it. But when you write, you do have a sense of control of, you know, fiction and storytelling, who lives, who dies, who, who laughs, who cries. It's one time you get to be in charge, which is quite a nice feeling. And I've always liked the power of word, you know, whether it was songwriting, which is more like a, a shot of coffee, because you get to, you get to um, make someone feel something instantly. It was like perfume, whereas writing a, story, a longer story is a, a bit like a, a, a lasting supper, and you've got to keep that appetite just enough to page turn. I've always liked the escapism of it. Yeah, and, and in the book, you um, see Rosie Frost is an ordinary, but still a, a tough female character. What was the kind of thought process behind creating her? First of all, I always love character. You know, I, I remember I watched two movies, and I'm not going to say what they are, but one, okay, they climb the tallest mountain in the world, and they die, and I didn't cry. And then I watched uh, Bridge of Spies with Mark Ryland. You know, it's about a, a Russian spy with and you wouldn't think it was that interesting, but I was like completely like transfixed and hooked. I was thinking it's character first. And, and I was thinking, you know, the world definitely, you know, it, it is changing and the, what we see and what we feel. And so Rosie Frost, you know, she is, at first she's, she's grieving and she's quite quiet and she grows, but there's also the characters around her if you can see, it can be it. So there, the, there's a, some boy characters in there that they're, they're, I think they're modern because they're strong, but they're soft, you know, they cry. I always think if you can see it, you can be it. Um, uh, the boys say, the girls say the, the boys. The, um, Rosie Frost doesn't slay dragons, she saves them. And it, it touches on things in a very sort of, light way if you want it, whether it's on conservation, whether it's on grief, whether it's on friendship, whether it's injustice. Um, and, they, and I think in a modern way, in a real way, in a raw way, if you want it, otherwise it's just pace, you know, it's just pacey page turning. Yeah. Um, and another thing I found really fascinating about the book and perhaps wasn't expecting was um, the historical links and the bit about Tudor England. And I say this as a, as a history student myself who's okay. doing a paper on Tudor England. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I found it really interesting that you chose Anne Boleyn um, as the kind of, you know, in, in the book, Rosie speaks to the ghost of Anne Boleyn. Um, why did you pick that period of history and why her in particular? I mean, I think history. There's a big question, you know, does the, you know, the past, we can't change it but does it shape us? We can only learn from it, that's it. And there are different periods in history, many periods of history that's absolutely fascinating. 
And um, Tudor, the Tudor time is a very sort of prolific time. It's Reformation. It's, you know, it's a really highly uh, evolving time, but then it's full of drama as well. And, you know, those six wives, you look at it, and then, and then I... Uh, well, somebody, as I said before, somebody said to me, oh, don't write about Anne Boleyn, she's not liked. And I was like, really? You know, I get it, you know, she's, she's portrayed in one sense. And I sort of looked at it and I thought, oh, hold on a minute, she's a human, let's look at her as a human being. Every person that you see in the media or in history was, a, you know, is a human being with feelings and thoughts and emotions. And I just thought, let's just let's unpack this a little a little bit and I actually the more I learned about her I was like god this is awful this is awful that if she was married to Henry VIII it actually sounded like a misogynistic pig that should be like me too it's horrible what he did when you really it's just not a, a character in history it's a person that behaved like very cruelly to, to a very a, a young woman a man so, and left behind a three-year-old girl. And so I sort of looked at that and I thought, let's look at her, Maybe we should celebrate her, give her some redemption. Um, that was kind of what it was. But again, it's there if you want it. You know, I turn the volume up on things a little bit, but, but if you're not really interested in history, we've moved on. It's kind of like there's a part of an ingredient, I would say. Um, and that kind of feeling of female... Um, characters or, or real life figures being unfairly represented is something that potentially carries through to the modern day. Um, do you feel that during your career you felt any kind of elements of that during your time um, in the Spice Girls or, or beyond? Do you know what? In different periods of time, you know, it, there have been challenges for all sexes, all genders, everyone. And you know, really, and we've heard the term feminism, girl power, but what does that really mean? Actually, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means the equalisation between the sexes. And I think, for me personally, it's two things. I think, you know, men or everyone gets a challenge in a different periods of their time. And, you know, and, and, and sometimes a pendulum will swing in one direction before it ticks in the middle. You know, I think men, a white man has just as much challenge in this day and age to find his, you know, masculinity. How does that fit in? And women, everyone, to find how does that, how does that rest now? You know, so I, I, I think a real modern way of looking at this is it's equality for everyone. You know, we put, it's that rule number two, we pull each other over the wall. You know, united we stand, rather than going, Rather than ranting about one individual, I think it's you know it's fairness for all. That's what that's how I I think a real modern uh, uh, feminization um, equality is. Yeah. Um, but do you think that um, do you think that we can get to equality without giving um, one one group? I think it's fair. I, I understand what you're saying. We all pull each at different times. Everyone, you know, different um, areas need, we all need different support, and I think that's very fair. Do you know what I mean? The pendulum's going to swing in that direction before it ticks in the middle, and I think that's, you know, and that's, that's, that's beyond fairness, that's loving. It's a kind human thing to do, really, of understanding. Um, but, you know, I think human beings, you know, we're, we're all idiots at different times, but for me, it's about, you know, being open and learning, you know, having that humility to learn from each other and understanding. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could go back to the very, very beginning, as in 22-year-old Jerry, who was about to audition for the Spice Girls before anything had started. Um, if you could give yourself some advice or tell yourself to do something differently, um, what would that be? That's so interesting. Um, what would I tell myself? Yeah. I don't know because, you know, I think hindsight's such a, you know, I don't think I'd do anything different. I mean, it's just reminding us. I think when I was younger, I had um, teenage bravado, which is a wonderful thing. It's like, yeah, come on, let's go for it. But then, you know, those doubts, you know, as I mentioned, can be our traitors. 
and they're always there. You know, I, the, the truth is, you know, here's a secret. I'm always, you know, I can always be like scared of things. But it's going back to that rule number three. Do you know what really takes the sting out of everything? Uh, it's two things. One is that education, you know, is a secret weapon in your back pocket. But the other thing that no matter how educated or it, uh, uh, unexperienced or whatever your experience is, if I know that I'm being of service and it's not about me, oh my God, it just takes the sting, the self-consciousness out of everything. And it's not about me. And that has always served me. And, and, and that, that feeling of, of being useful, you know, it has an ebb and flow. As I've got older, it's become more paramount to me. But when I think, you know, each of you have been given a gift, you know, whether, you know, of intelligence, intuition in a different area, and you know that you can be of service to the world, oh my goodness, it's suddenly game, it's a game changer for me. And that's always, and sometimes I've deviated, you know, and gone into self-serving, but when it's of service, I think that's, that's a, it's a great thing. Not easy, but it's useful. Um, and I think it's undeniable that the impact you had as Ginger Spice inspired so many other people, either in the music industry or in completely different walks of life. Um, and I wonder, was there anyone that you looked up to or look up to now for inspiration? Um, I always liked um, Maya Angelou. I think she was amazing because, you know, as well as she has, forgive this sort of crass phase, but I think in life we're all going to go through difficulties and challenges and I've gone through some challenges but you know can we turn our poop to fertilizer can you use it to, for, for, to good you know like my father died when I was you know, probably about your one of your ages and I was in so much pain about it I thought it made me really a sense of my own mortality if anyone's read Hamlet you know that sort of sense of oh my god I'm next and so I've, it made me very driven and want to be, give to the world. Um, so I love my Angelou, but you know, who inspires me? I had, you know, there was an 18 year old in my kitchen the other day and I was asking her about something and, I was, and she, her fresh opinion, I was like, that's so inspiring. I think um, to keep open and, you know, and forever curious, and open to learning. I think there's always inspiration around us. You lot inspire me. Was, you know, some of your ideas I was listening to, I was like, yeah, that's really cool. I think sometimes it's really easy, you know, I don't know if you have this, but your old, the older generation can get a little bit, yeah, we know it all. But actually, the, you know, the, the, the generations, you know, that are, are coming up can be underestimated. They're so smart and fresh. The thinking yeah, that's invaluable to have a fresh idea you know a new brush sweeps clean I think and is it true that you're potentially thinking of applying to Oxford to study history and English um, <laughs> do you know what it was I took my, I took my do I took my daughter around here and she she's applying and um, I was looking at this you know it's such a wonderful place and to be part of this feels so special. And I thought, wow, if I ever got the opportunity, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, I think, you know, you're, you're all incredibly lucky. I would love the opportunity. I think it's nice to be part of something. I can feel that, you know, beyond the education as well, you know, your alumni are coming back and serving each other. It's so nice, really nice. It's a special place, isn't it? I can feel it. Um, and I wonder whether I could ask you a couple of questions about the Spice Girls. And yeah, of course. Book, but, um, so, is it true the name Ginger Spice was given to you by a magazine? And if so, um, if you could have given yourself a nickname, what would it be? Oh God, that's so interesting. <laughs> How can I maintain humility <laughs> in that? Um, uh, so, yes, that's true. It's like in... Uh, we had, there was a, a like a, a magazine called Top of Pops magazine and they just, they met us and then they put sort of a spice rack and gave each one of us and then it stuck. 
Um, and then if I'd give myself a name, I don't know, maybe Curious Spice. I, I, do you know what? I always find anyone interesting. No matter who I've met from, you know, whether it's, I don't know, from the postman to the president, you know, I've been lucky enough to meet all sorts of people and everyone's got a story, everyone's got an opinion. Um, so maybe that, I know, curious. <laughs> I'm just curious, that's all. Um, and the group was initially called Touch, um, yeah. but what was it that inspired the name to be changed to, to Spice Girls? Um, I mean, so obviously we were all very different. I was in an exercise class. Sometimes I think our best ideas come when we're doing something else. You know, so it's almost like free flow. I was, and I, I was, just, I was doing exercise and I thought, oh, that would be good. I mean, Spice, and I went and all the others. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and also, is it true that your iconic Union Jack dress was actually inspired by tea towel? Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Inspi okay. So what? It, what <laughs> not quite, but almost there. Yeah, you're, 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 you're right. But no. So basically, and this is one of those things is that you know that rule that I was trying. You know, take the chance you fear the most, or or to thine own self be true. Um, so. I, you know, we were preparing to go for um, the Brit Awards. And I I've always looked at America a lot and think the way they're so patriotic, I love that. And that they're, um, they're like, yeah, go for it, follow your dreams. And, and I remember thinking of the Brits. And I, I used to also, I would say I'm, I, can, I can do a bit of everything, but I wouldn't say particularly, you know, the supreme maestro or any of it. but. I was, um, I liked uh, doing uh, textiles, sewing. And, um, and I thought, oh, that'd be interesting if I could celebrate, like celebrate our country. And um, I can see some Union Jack socks there. <laughs> and I thought, it, well, that'd be nice. And I remember someone saying, it was a stylist saying, oh no, no you shouldn't wear that. That's because in the olden days it meant also there's a bit of national front, but politically it wasn't very nice. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm being patriotic, I want to celebrate. And that was a moment which always reminds me, follow your gut instincts. And I think I put a peace sign on the back just to reaffirm that, you know, this is a positive <laughs> message. And um, but what I, I was given a black Gucci, it was like a Marilyn Monroe 50 swimming costume. And I, and I took a... Uh, a tea towel, that's where you got the tea towel, of a flag and had that stitched on. So that's it. Oh, so it's a bit of high fashion and, and sort of practical, smashed together. <laughs> and did you think at the time that it was going to become as big of a statement as it did? I don't know. You, you never know. You know. I've always, when I've got it right, I followed my gut instinct. When it's sort of just of service, there's a little bit of like gumption in there, but yeah, who, who knows when it's going to connect. Yeah. And you've done singing, songwriting, fashion, acting, writing. What's next? Um, well, I've got a hand in this, uh, the second book from right. Rosie. <laughs> of the editor wants me to get it done, so I've got to do that. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, so I feel very lucky. To, to be able to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, throughout all of that, do you think there's kind of one thing that you think of as your biggest achievement? And that could be personal or throughout oh, yeah. your career? It's really like, I wouldn't, it's hard at different periods in one's life because, you know, I think ambition is a, is a good thing. It's a good thing, you know, to give to the world. I think naturally we're all creators. And you know, and some I've you know achieved things that I'm very proud of. But I think as I've got older, you know, having them right size, you know, so my fa now my family are very very important to me. You know, my children, my husband, to be in that to have that is is, is I'm very proud of that. It's in context, I think. It, I, so you know, I, I think that that's a very thing I'm very proud of to have. 